Hello everyone and welcome to this endless engineering video. Today we're going to be implementing ridge regression or L2 regularization in Python from scratch. So in our ridge regression theory video we derived the solution theta hat is equal to x transpose x plus lambda i where i is the identity all of that inverse times x transpose y to be the approximate solution that would minimize this cost function right where we had this least you know the sum of squared errors and then we had this l2 regularization term where this is the l2 norm of the parameter vector theta and lambda is the factor and we had this x and y matrices which were like stacked values of x bar and y i really recommend that you check out the video uh, that we did on the theory of l2 regularization before you go through this jupyter notebook and just a note i'll leave uh, a link for in, the, in the description below for the GitHub location of this Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so let's start out with importing some packages, and then we're gonna we're gonna write out this class that is our Ridge class. So I have this class that's called Ridge, which is gonna let us create objects to do ridge regression. And here we have the constructor. So we're passing in this uh, lam, which is the lambda parameter, which is the L2 regularization factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to store this lambda value, right? So now after we create the object, we pass the lambda to it, it's going to store it. And then we want to be able to create the x bar, which is this x bar here in the cost function, which defines, you know, if we multiply theta transpose times x bar, you get our model. So in this case, it's going to be specific. Uh, feel free to take this code and make it more general uh, to practice your skills with creating a ridge regression object. In this case, we're just going to do an x bar which has uh, 1, x, and then x squared. Right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use uh, numpy h stack, which stacks horizontally uh, some arrays. So we're going to have 1, we're going to have x, and then, sorry, x and we're going to have the square of x. And the reason I'm doing this is because I have an example here that's going to be quadratic in nature, and I want my model to be quadratic in x, right? Uh, and like I said, this is very specific to this example, so please feel free to get this code and implement something a little more general to allow you to solve this problem for any kind of polynomial model that you'd like to fit. And our next function is the fit function. This is what the user will call to fit to a specific kind of data, and we pass to it x train and y train, which is the training data. So the first thing we want to do is we want to stack the data, right? Because remember, we had our um, capital X and capital Y matrices that are used in the solution. So we're going to do a vertical stack here of our data. I'm going to start out with uh, x bar, right, because x is stacked x bars. So I'm going to use my x bar function that I created. I'm going to pass to it an x, and then I'm going to get all the x's in x train. So this is a, if you're not familiar with this uh, syntax, this is called a list comprehension. So feel free to look it up. It's basically looping through all the x's in x train that the user passes in and it's creating these x bar vectors using my function and I'm going to stack all of those on top of each other vertically and I'm going to do the same thing for my y I'm going to stack the y's that are coming in so I'm going to do y for y in y train all right, okay so now I have my x and y matrices so what I want to do is I want to find the solution, right? The solution says that theta, or my parameters, is x transpose x uh, plus lambda uh, times i all inverse, right? So I'm going to just use the code notation here, right? Times x transpose y. Right? That's what we're trying to get to. Uh, to get our model. So this is going to be compute the model coefficients, right, which are theta, as the notation we used in our math. So let me just break out some of those things. We can see x transpose here. Um, we need x transpose twice on this side and here over here. So I'm just going to compute x transpose and just call it xt. That'll just be the transpose 
of x with numpy. And I'm going to also compute x transpose x just to make um, the code look smaller. So you don't have to do this. I'm just breaking it up so that we can do it in a way that makes it look nice. So this is x transpose x. And I'm going to just go ahead and add to it uh, the lambda times identity. And it's very important here to be sure to use the right size or shape for the identity matrix. Remember, we're doing x transpose x. So this, this matrix right here, the x transpose x, will have, a, will be a square matrix. Um, and it'll be a square with the, uh, columns, uh, with the, with the, you know, columns of x matrix. So it's very important to use the identity matrix here, the shape, uh, element number one, which will give you the columns of x. And so now we can do like a self-coefficient hat, you know, if you want to call it that. So these are like the estimates of the coefficients. And that's going to be matrix multiply times matrix multiply of the inverse of the x transpose x as I called it and then x transpose and then y. Okay. okay so let's take a look at what this is. So we basically did stacking of our x's which is x bars stacked vertically. We stacked our y's which is y uh, stacked vertically. Then we computed x transpose and then we computed the x transpose x but we added to it the lambda times the identity, so that's our regularization factor. And now what we're doing here is we are multiplying x transpose x inverse uh, times x transpose times y. So that's what we have. Uh, and that gives us this solution, x transpose x plus lambda inverse uh, times x transpose y. Right? Okay, so that's our class. We've built it. And what I'm going to do here, I've had some pre-written code where I'm going to generate some random data. And here you'll see why I have um, created the, the um, x bar function in our class to be quadratic. It's because I know that I'm generating quadratic data. And like I said, uh, feel free to do it as an exercise to make your ridge class more general. So here's my data that I've created. It's just random data that I've you know created some coefficients c0, c1, c2, and then I multiplied them by some input and I added some random noise to it. Right. Again, this is a contrived example, but the approach here is to show you how you can make reg reg ridge regression class that you can implement on any kind of data. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to train my data. So I'm using the train test split functionality, which is available in sklearn. I'm splitting my data into training set and testing set, and I'm creating uh, a ridge class or ridge object with a lambda value of 0.1. So my ridge... Um, uh, you know, my regularization factor is 0.1. I'm using my fit function and I train my model. Now for comparison, I've also, um, importing the ridge model from sklearn so that we can see if we get the same result and how different we are from that. So I run that. I've already, I've also trained the model in that code. And here we're plotting the actual data and the prediction that comes from the custom ridge regression function uh, functionality that we've created and the sklearn ridge regression functionality and you can see they're very very similar almost identical and i've printed here also the values of the coefficients the c um c2 c1 and c0 which are, are defining our model and you can see that they're very close um the difference is actually small in like the second de decimal location and that's most likely because sklearn is using a numerical solver uh, and they converge at some iteration or something like that uh, we're using an analytical solution where we are actually getting the actual ex the exact solution uh, but the difference here is is really negligible right another cool thing that I've added here is some code that allows us to basically plot the effect of the regularization factor lambda on our uh, coefficients and remember the regularization is basically making the norm of the coefficients smaller, right? Because we have a term. If I go back up here where we wrote 
our, our function, our cost function. We have a term here, lambda times the norm squared. So it's going to try to minimize this as much as possible. And the larger this factor is, the more it minimizes um, the, the norm of that vector. So let's see what that really looks like. I'm plotting here basically all of my components of the vector, the parameter vector. And I'm saying that, okay, I have, you know, um, how many do I have? I have C0, C1, and then C3. Oh, that's supposed to be C2, not C3. Let me fix that. C2 here. And then the norm, let's make this also be circles. So you can see for these values that x is the actual lambda value. You can see that for every lambda value, we have a specific value of C0, C1, and C2. And the interesting trend here is that we see that C0 goes down as the lambda value goes up from 0 to 1. C1 goes down also, but C2 goes up. And that's most likely because C2 is a small number. And when you look at the actual norm of this vector, you can see that it's going down. So it's not necessary that every parameter in your model is going to be decreased in L2 organization. It's that the norm should go down. So some of them will go up, some of them will go down. And that depends on how sensitive your model is to certain uh, parameters. But I just wanted to show you here and include this code so when you play around in the notebook, you'll see that the regularization actually affects your results uh, in a way that minimizes the norm. Okay, there you have it. That's our ridge regression or L2 regularization class implemented in Scratch, oh, from Scratch in Python. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit that thumbs up button and think about subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.